Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wine Cast. Though I've casted fairly extensively on France and its wine regions, there's still a couple that I've missed, so I'm taking a stab at remedying that oversight with this cast on a relatively little known but still intriguing wine region in France, Corsica. Corsica is an island in the northern part of the western Mediterranean that lies just north of Sardinia and west of the Italian peninsula. Viticulture here goes back a long way to the settlement of the island by Greek colonists starting around the 6th century BCE, followed by influences from the Romans and various Italian city-states, particularly the Republic of Genoa that controlled the island for over five centuries from 1284 until it was ceded to France by treaty in 1768. Though it became and has remained politically a part of greater metropolitan France not long after its session by Genoa, Corsica has maintained its own cultural identity that retains a strong affinity for its Italian roots. And though a part of France, Corsica's wine culture developed relatively slowly to that of other French regions with the first steps toward a modern industry appearing in the late 19th century and getting a boost in the 1960s with the arrival of French refugees, many of them winemakers, from Algeria after that nation gained its independence from France in 1962. Corsica was awarded its first and still most prestigious AOC, the Patrimonio AOC, later that decade in 1968. In terms of topography, Corsica has a very mountainous and legally preserved interior so most plantings are in the low-lying or relatively low-lying areas that ring the island along the coast. The climate here, unsurprisingly given its location, is Mediterranean, hot and with modest precipitation, particularly during the growing season, and averaging between 27 and 2900 hours of sunshine per year. So what does all of this sunshine help grow? About 10,000 acres or 4,000 hectares of grapes, most of which about two-thirds are red. Red and white grapes authorized for AOC production reflect the island's historic connections to the Italian peninsula, with its key grape that takes up about 35% of the island's total acreage under vine being Neoluccio, which is a local name for Sangiovese. Neoluccio, that you may see spelled with a U rather than an O at the end, reflecting a grammatical convention in the local Corsican language for masculine nouns, is followed by Chacarello, another Italian grape known as Mamolo on the boot, and famed for the notes of violet that are on its nose. And then by Grenache, a grape that may have made its way to Corsica under the influence of the crown of Aragon that controlled the island for a period of time. Syrah, Sanso, Carignan, Mourved, and Barbarossa, also known as Barbaru, round out the list of AOC reds. There's also a fair amount of Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Pinot Noir grown on the island, and that, along with AOC-authorized varieties, are permitted for use in IGP-level wines. On the white front, Vermentino is the top dog, taking up about half the land under vine that Neoluccio does, but clocking in at a still impressive 17% or so of planted grapes. Vermentino is followed by Uni Blanc, another grape with an Italian connection where it's more famous as Trebbiano. Codivarta is a very old variety that may be native to Corsica and is practically unknown in other French wine regions. Finally, Muscata Petit Gran is important to a Vendu Naturel made at the AOC level on Corsica, but it's also important to IGP production along with the other white grapes and Chardonnay. In terms of wine styles, rosé is king, usually representing around 65-70% to 70 of total production on Corsica. White production comes in at second at around 20% of total production. These numbers represent a shift toward increased production for these styles, with the number of for rosé having been around 30% and for white around 10% at the turn of the 21st century. Wines from Corsica tend to be fresh in character, foregrounding fruit in their profile, and featuring a limited use of oak, if any at all, though of course there are always exceptions. So, where are all of these AOCs? And, for that matter, how many are there? The answer is that there are nine AOCs on Corsica, with the largest being an island-wide AOC, Vendée de Corse. Along with its five sub-regions that we'll cover in a moment, this AOC accounts for about 45% of wine produced at the AOC level. Though the appellation does cover the entire island, most production that ends up with the basic Vendée de Corse designation takes place in the northeastern quadrant of the island. Reds and rosés, that make up around 90% of the generic Appalachian's production, must be a blend with Neoluccio, Chacarello, and Grenache, making up at least half of that blend. This trio can be supported by the other AOC-authorized reds, and by Vermentino, but neither Vermentino nor the red grape Carignan can exceed 20% of the blend. 
Whites for this appellation must be a minimum 70% Vermentino, supported by the other whites, but with Uni Blanc not to exceed 25% of the wine in the bottle. Vin de Corse has five sub-appellations that function much like villages do in other French AOCs, meant to represent higher potential quality based on greater specificity of the growing area, lower mandated yields, or stricter production standards. Reds and rosés follow the same production requirements as the generic AOC, though yields in tons of grapes per acre are more limited than in the generic. Whites require a slightly higher minimum percentage of Vermentino, 75% to be exact, in the bottle. Going counterclockwise around the island, the five sub-regions of Vin de Corse are Vin de Coteau du Cap Corse, Vin de Corse Calvi, Vin de Corse Sartène, Vin de Corse Figari, Vin de Corse Porto Vecchio. The large Ajaccio AOC on the western side of the island features reds and rosés that must be a minimum 60% Chacarello, and that can include the other AOC reds and Vermentino. Whites must be a minimum 80% Vermentino, and if the wine is a blend, the remainder must be Uni Blanc. The island's oldest and perhaps most highly regarded AOC, Patrimonio, makes reds that must be 90% Neoluccio, and that may include some Chacarello, Grenache, and Vermentino. Rosés can include a bit more of those blending partners because the requirements for Neoluccio here dips to 75%. Whites must be 100% Vermentino. Muscat du Cap Corse is a specialty of certain communes in both the Vin de Coteau du Cap Corse and Patrimonio AOCs. Made exclusively from Muscat à Petit Gran, Muscat du Cap Corse is a vin du naturel that's made by drying the grapes, a process known as passeriage in French, and then by arresting fermentation through the addition of a distilled spirit, or moutage. The result is a wine with 15-18% to 18 alcohol by volume, so a bit stronger than your average table wine, and a residual sugar of about 90 grams per liter, that is 9% or more, and that features notes of caramel, candied fruit, and baking spices like cinnamon and nutmeg, and that's considered a world-class dessert wine, and that may be Corsica's best-known export on the international market. So far we've talked only about AOC production on the island, but most of Corsica's production is actually at the IGP, or Indication Géographique Protégée level. Most IGP wines are made under the local and island-wide Ile de Beauté, or Isle of Beauty appellation, from a famous nickname for Corsica. And some wine is produced under the regional IGP Mediterranée. As noted earlier, the grapes used in this production tier include those allowed for AOC-level wine, as well as Merlot, Cab Sauve, and Pinot Noir for the reds, and Chardonnay for the whites, with a fair amount of Muscat à Petit Grand being used to produce wines at the IGP level as well. Thanks for joining me for another wine cast. Though Corsican wines can be hard to find on the international market, I hope this cast gave you some insight into what to expect and what you might be drinking if you do find them, or that it was just otherwise helpful to you. If it was, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and please leave a comment or question below, and I'd really love thoughts from anyone who's had a chance to try some Corsican wine. I'm your host, The Unknown Winecaster, and I'm out. Enjoy the grape, but always enjoy it responsibly.